be home unless the prison governor was scared she might die in the cells. I can't imagine Charlotte going on hunger strike. I can. I know how obstinate she can be. I bet she looks pretty grisly. Mother's bound to notice. All right. I'll go to West Hill and prepare the ground. But I'm not looking forward to it. But, Mark, you can't stop her coming home. She'll be arriving at the station. And she expects a welcome under my roof. I disown her. She is no daughter of mine. Ring the bell, if you please. I need my smelling salts. Isn't it your duty to nurse her back to full health? Duty? What duty has she ever shown me? A horse whip, you said. On Paddington Station. Oh, what a disgraceful scene. I trust none of my acquaintance in Bradley has heard of it. I think not, ma'am. There are so many reports of violence committed by suffragettes. The Pankhursts have used up all the headlines. You rang, ma'am? Could you find Mrs. Holroyd's smelling bottle, please, Alice? Yes, Mr. Pilling. There is no excuse for her behaviour. There is no excuse, but I understand the reason. It is remarkable that a criminal or a drunkard should have a right to vote. And yet, the woman doctor at the hospital, for instance, she has no right to vote. A woman capable of saving lives, of treating Charlotte's injuries. Injuries? From the forcible feeding. Force feeding? My daughter? Yes. They'll have pushed a tube down her throat, right into her stomach. Very painful. And food is pumped through the tube. Women warders hold the prisoners down while this vile treatment is carried out. Oh dear, I feel quite faint. Mr. Hilling. Mr. Pilling. She must come here. I can hide her away until she's more like her old self. But she will keep to her room. I shall not speak to her. Oh, Charlotte, you poor silly girl. Come on, lean on me. You hardly wear feather. Hello. Hello, Charlotte. She can't talk much. Never had such a peaceful drive. You see, I have let you down. It can't be right to make yourself so ill. Why, Charlotte? I have to. <sighs> if only Mr. Asquith had kept his promise and given us the right to vote, no suffragette would have stepped up the violence. I'd rather go on peaceful marches, but what's the good? Women have been meeting and marching for 30 years. I had to do something. Oh, not planting bombs or setting fire to buildings. I'd be afraid of hurting innocent people. But we have tried every peaceful method. I was proud to be arrested with my colleagues. How could I let them suffer alone for what I believe in too? We have to stand together for justice. Be assured of this. The government ignores discontent among sections of the community at its peril. What about votes for women? Charlotte, no, not now. It's not the place. This is the place. I have to thank the lady who so rudely interrupted me for reminding us who started direct action. A militant labor owes a lot to the tactics of the suffragettes. When government is slow in giving us the pledges we want, why shouldn't we fight for our claims? Oh, that's exactly. dangerous talk. Exactly. I agree. Do we want civil war between capital why and labour? Between men who have the vote and women who don't trust them to use it right? Between Irish home rulers and the Orangemen of Ulster? I tell you this. If groups in Ireland take up arms against their fellow citizens, why can't say the National Union of Railwaymen spend its half million on guns as well? Why not let ladies go on parade with guns? Of course it's 
It's rubbish. Why is it? We can't shoot our problems away. We have to build political strength together. And if, if women too could speak with one voice instead of making fools of themselves, then Parliament may be more prepared to listen to them. I'm right, am I right or wrong? Think about what I'm saying, you know I'm speaking the truth. soon enough, Charlotte. Worse luck. There may never be votes for women, but I bet there'll be votes for ladies, property owners. I don't want that. I want complete equality for all women. Then their wages may improve. The unions won't stand for equal pay, so you can forget it. Well, that hardly seems fair, Tom. Why should women provide cheap labour? Because men should be the breadwinners, and women earn the extras. That's ridiculous. Yes, but the miners must not be allowed to call the tune. Mr. Alroyd, Mr. Alroyd, is my brother still here? Yes, Albert, what's the matter? I've been all around the pubs looking for part. Nobody's seen him. He's over there stirring his tea. Now get your breath back and tell me what's the matter. And why are there so few women in trade unions? What are you afraid of? I don't like to hear either of you say that you support violence, even as a last resort. I, when don't, I don't think you really Tom, would. you're wanted at home. Fetching that medicine. I wouldn't put your faith in it, Pa. The, the doctor said it'd only keep her out of pain until. <laughs> keep her out of pain. I only just managed to fettle this clock for her. Now she's not coming downstairs no more. She, she was pleased. Should have fixed it before, shouldn't it? Let's go see how she is. Tom, I can't seem to find any soap. <laughs> I should have been here instead of this bad in politics. How could you know? She's had nothing of her life, nothing, except work and more work. You don't have to stay. I'd like to. Listen, tell me straight, if I can get enough money to get into hospital... No, Tom. When I was young and times were hard, what she used to do? When we came in, there'd be one dirty plate in the sink. She used to tell us she'd had her dinner. And then one day, I caught her wiping some gravy over a clean plate. She'd come without her dinner hundreds of times as we could eat. for tomorrow. Yeah, fair wore out today. Oh. It's 
clock still going? It is that. <sighs> Charlotte's here, Mother. And I think it's high time you forgave her. She may kiss me. Thank you for letting me come home. I'm much better now. I'll go back to London in a few days. All I have to say to her, Morris, is that I shall not stop her allowance after all. Her father would not have wished her to be penniless. But I can work and support myself, Mama. The trouble with modern girls, Morris, is that they throw away their advantages. Charlotte could have married a real gentleman of quality. Well, perhaps, Mother, Charlotte doesn't care for a quiet, comfortable life. Oh, there's no point in arguing, Morris. Mama doesn't deserve the right to vote. She's never had to struggle to keep us fed and clothed. I'm fighting for the rights of women like Sarah Selby. Poor Mrs. Selby got through more work every day than Mama has done in the whole of her pampered life. How dare you? Oh, my dear. Well, you're treated very badly in prison. She has been punished, Mother. Charlotte. I'm sorry. I never understand. But why such appalling violence? You could have written a letter to the Times. A well-mannered plea for justice. Haven't women been trying that for years? And haven't men been taking absolutely no notice? Come in. Oh, good evening, Mr. Pinney. Good evening, Barbara. I've called in to tell you I've brought Alice Selby back. How is... Her mother died an hour ago. The funeral is to be held in chapel on Thursday. It's a shame old Maggie couldn't be here. At least our Feddy came. And Maggie would never have got a boat out of Dublin, Pa. Not just now. Yeah, but she'd have wanted to come, wouldn't she? You go home, Mr. Selby. Think back on happier days than this. Don't seem like home no more. Come on, Pa. I didn't always treat her kindly, you see. It was a drink. I'm sure she forgave you. <laughs> I'm not best pleased with myself about the drink. When are you giving up your job, then? Pa wants Ma's clothes sorting. And the bedding washed. There's an awful lot of washing to be done. And you know how filthy our tongue gets down the pits? I'll do it Saturday afternoon. You'll be a good cook. Now the whole roads have had a training of you. I'd be sorry to leave, Westhill. Well, you'll have to. You have three men at home need looking after now. I wish there was someone else. Well, there isn't. Anyone else would have to pay. Now, Miss Allroyd. Thank you, dear. We shall be sorry to lose you. You've done well. Pardon me, Miss, but won't you be sent back to prison again? Very probably. I have to finish my sentence, Alice. Don't worry. I'm a suffragette now. Like you. <laughs> Alice, you can't be. I am Miss Allroyd. I'll shout out, votes for women at the bioscope. We're not afraid of policemen. Are we, miss? Not all suffragettes are hysterical half-wits. Mm. 
It may surprise you to hear this, but I'm sorry I broke the law. Hmm. It wasn't practical. Mrs. Pankhurst made a mistake in stepping up the violence. Oh, I'll say. She can't even aim straight at the Prime Minister's window. All right. We are missing our target. Even if laws are made by men who are voted into power by other men, we women must keep those laws. Here, here. And not give men the excuse to lock us up so they don't have to listen to us anymore. Our voice must be heard. We are half the population and we must be represented. No matter how long this Liberal government betrays its promises, no matter how many other governments frustrate and disappoint us, I shall not rest until women, all women, have the right to vote. Well, I'd better give the officer a cup of tea. He means business. I'm afraid so. Well, she's all ready with her bag packed. Not bad. Not bad for a half-wit. The uh, law has come for you. Yes. Oh, Morris, it is so beastly in prison. Miss Allroyd. Mr. Allroyd. Please, can we power up a word for you? Yes, of course, Alice. What is it, Mr. Selby? Uh, well, you ask the top. Uh, it's about Alice. We wondered if you'd consider keeping her on. Uh, we shan't have enough room at our house. Yeah, we don't need to help us out anymore, and, uh, well, all the trouble in Ireland, and all the folks starving in Dublin, and her having a young lad to fend for. Our yeah. uh, Maggie's coming back. Maggie? Oh, Tom, I'm so glad. Yes. So, she can stay on at her job. Oh, Mama will be delighted. <laughs> Alice is making really good progress. She's a credit to her mother, Mr. Selby. Yes, Charlotte. This may be the last you taste for a month, but it's drinkable. You're to go quietly with the officer. I've promised you won't start a riot. I haven't even brought my horse whip. Mm.